I'm, I'm Greg, Greg Jamian, and, and thank you for watching Boomer, Boomer Health at Home, the show where we explore the most relevant health care topics impacting the baby boomer generation today. As, As more and more baby boomers, boomers seek answers to many times difficult health care questions, questions, our goal is, is to provide ideas, tips, and cutting-edge cutting solutions that will help improve your everyday life and health. It is, it is our hope, hope that you find the following information helpful as you sit back and watch Boomer, Boomer Health at Home. Hello, I'm Ryan Donald alongside Brett Polte and you're watching Boomer Health at Home. Thank you for tuning in. Brett, what do, we have, what do we have today on today's agenda? Well, today we're going to be talking about fall risks. We have occupational therapist Nathan Clinton Barnett coming in, and he's going to be giving us some tips and, and knowledge on fall risks and how to prevent them, what to do in, in cases if they do happen. Well, that's great. Well, for some advice on this and to learn more on this topic, don't go away. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. As mentioned before the break, today's episode we're going to talk about falls and the dangers they present and also ways to maybe avoid a fall for yourself and really just what what's going on? Why are people falling at a certain age? And of course, you know, Brett and I don't know much about anything, so we bring experts True. on the show to help educate the audience. <laughs> so uh, to join us today, expert on the topic, is uh, Nathan uh, Clinton Barnett. Do, Nate, tell them a little bit about your background. So. Sure. Um, I'm uh, an occupational therapist uh, specializing in uh, fall prevention, um, balance disorders, uh, you know, of the geriatric population. So really kind of like the, the whole movement, um, you know, in regard to independence, assist, you know, activities of daily living and things like that. So. Um, uh, my focus is effectively keeping people as independent as possible, and to do that, obviously, is preventing falls is a big thing for this population. Great. So if anyone has any questions about falls, you are definitely the credible source <laughs> for the answer. So well, thank you for being on the show today. That's true. No, uh, and Nate, you know, what causes a loss of balance in the elderly? You know, it really depends on a, a number of circumstances. Um, I mean, there will always be circumstances where falls are, are truly unavoidable. Fall prevention... Um, you can never prevent 100% of falls from happening. I mean, uh, my seven-year-old son can trip over a rock, you know, and different things like that that can just be obviously as part of the thing. But the stigma that is associated with um, the aging process is that falls are just a natural part of getting older. We need to reject that. Um, that is not something that uh, we should accept as a medical community or even just part of you know the human race for the most part. Um, <clears throat> the, the biggest thing about you know things that can cause falls um, are a lot of very very subtle as well as very um, not so subtle um, instances uh, loss of muscle strength decreased activity being here in Michigan you know we kind of hibernate in the winter months the activity yeah. level goes down our muscle strength goes down we're more vulnerable during this time um, vision uh, is a big one uh, you know sometimes the the slow decline of vision, uh, you know, be it contrast sensitivity, cataracts, macular degeneration, uh, things like that can affect fall prevention. Cognition's another one, um, you know, the onset of dementia or just simple forgetfulness of safety measures. Uh, so there's lots of different, you know, things that can come into play in regard to fall risk. Um, but each individual, um, I guess, specialty, be it a physician, nurse practitioner, physical therapist, occupational therapist, uh, nurses, you know, we all kind of have our own unique approach when it comes to examining some of these risks and how we can help. Great, so you mentioned fall risk and you hear that term passed around and so I mean like this guy's fall risk every time he leaves the bar I mean he's yeah. going to trip and fall but, yeah. <laughs> but how do you really diagnose someone as a fall risk? I mean what is, what's mm -hmm. out there that can actually 
you know, determine that someone is at risk of fall or has what you just told some of these weaknesses? Sure. So our company, for its a safe balance, uh, is a proprietary multifactorial falls risk assessment to intervention program. So it's a fancy, long-winded term for we're going to examine the top highest risk uh, areas of falls, be it uh, vision, cognition, standing balance, uh, gait, you know, walking back and forth. Um, prior fall history, different things like that. And we're going to identify the severity markers and ultimately find a way to mitigate those risks. So you'd be surprised, for instance, on the amount of people, I mean, that you guys can probably think of, you know, that are 65 and older, and you can ask them, when was the last time you had your vision checked? And a lot of times, you know, people are still wearing the same lenses mm -hmm. that they had from 10 years prior. Well, we all know um, that uh, vision, if you think about it, if you can't really see something, more inclined to trip over it, more inclined to have, you know, obviously an accident or anything like that. But statistics actually show that if we find somebody who has a, um, a history of, of low vision or, or degenerative case of vision, um, you know, impairment, that uh, a comprehensive eye examination by an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, uh, you know, focusing on that, plus an occupational therapist coming in doing a home safety assessment and compensatory strategies there can actually decrease the risk of falls by 38%. Wow. So just one small little identification of the marker, um, that's the key thing. We have to identify it, otherwise we can't manage it. So that's where the, the, the big thing kind of comes into play, is being able to identify it. And, it, and it's, it's really interesting because a lot of people don't think about vision. You know, they don't think, if I can see it, I'll avoid it. Mm -hmm. They just think, something's there, I might trip over it. Sure. You know, it, it's, it's very interesting there. Yeah, so one of the things, I mean, contrast sensitivity is one of the, um, you know, things that in safe balance that we actually measure. And contrast sensitivity is obviously your ability to discern, you know, contrast. Um, but think about this. What does this mean in real life? Think about um, somebody with hardwood floors, for instance, and they have maybe one or two steps. Well, the hardwood floors in those steps, they might have difficulty viewing the contrast between step one, step two. So if we have difficulty clearing that because of the vision loss, then we're going to have, um, you know, obviously an increased fall risk. If an occupational therapist comes in, even just puts a small little contrast stripe to indicate, hey, here's a stair we've just decreased that fall risk. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone's at home doing this or listening to this show, is there a way that, is it something that maybe they could just like learn or instinctively do to fall safely? Is there any like practice they could do, I don't know, tuck and roll or something? Tuck and roll, yeah. <laughs> um, that's uh, the, the best course of action that I always recommend, especially if we have somebody who is um, thinking that you know, they're a fall risk or maybe a family member thinks that they're a fall risk or a friend or anything like that, is usually always go and consult with their physician. Express to them, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little wobbly, I feel, um, you know, perhaps a little blurry vision, you know, or different things like that, dizzy. Um, I mean, how many times do you do we say, we stood up too quickly and now we mm -hmm. feel a little bit dizzy, you know, presence of orthostatic hypotension, different things like that. Right. A lot of these discussions should start with the physician. Um, ultimately, then the physician's gonna be able to say, you know, where do we go from here to further, obviously, uh, mitigate this risk, uh, form an intervention plan, and, and obviously make sure that they're as safe as possible. Yeah, that, that's that's interesting as well. I mean, this whole topic, everything you're telling us is interesting today. So, you know, if someone does fall, what's one of the most serious consequences that can come from a fall? Well, this is this is actually probably the most disturbing um, aspect of the fall statistics because, again, falls among the elderly is actually, uh, and, and if you consider 2018 medicine, we're becoming more and more advanced. This is a problem that is getting worse. Hmm. Um, so we're seeing more falls. We're seeing a higher frequency of falls. We're seeing a higher um, burden on the U.S. healthcare system in regard to cost associated with falls. Okay. And this doesn't even have to do with the most important factor, which is the actual impact on the patient themselves. So when we take a look at, you know, what are there? Believe it or not, the CDC came right out and said that if you suffer a hip fracture um, after sustaining a fall, you have a 20% of, of dying within the first year or two. Wow. So it's something that this is, this is a catastrophic um, issue. You could be golfing 18 holes, fall, break your hip, and then this is the statistic that we have, you know, that comes in through here. In fact, believe it or not, now, currently 65 and older, you have a one in three chance of experiencing a fall every year. And that number comes to about 50% 
when you're about in the 80 um, population and older. So again, a very proactive, a very preventative approach is key wow. um, just to obviously just mitigate this risk even just the smallest amount. Well, that's an interesting thought too for someone mm -hmm. at home that it, sometimes you, know, you hear stories of maybe a loved one fell, mm -hmm. they don't report it to anyone because they're afraid that mm -hmm. it's going to go and mm -hmm. you know, take them out, but you got to do something about it. So it could right, and Ryan, not only in addition to that, a lot of times people do hide the fact that they fall just to your point because they don't want to relocate from their home or anything like that but a prior fall is a serious indicator that another fall will occur again yeah. so again it doesn't necessarily mean um, that we need to change locations or go into you know a lot of the fears of nursing homes or anything like that no no, no. there's so many the vast majority of interventions we can do are right there in the home the goal for today's medicine is to age in place you know age in the home yeah. and and that's ultimately what we can do from a preventative model unfortunately if we have catastrophic injuries such as you know um you know broken bones related to falls you know those hands may be played for us you know right. from the medical community so yeah, and, and and you know, like you're saying, everything's just kind of we want to do a preventative thing. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the you know issues with falls that tend to get overlooked? Um, you know, what's interesting with with falls that, that they, they kind of tend to get overlooked again is there there seem to be a stigma that goes along with falls being just a natural part of the aging process. Again, we have to reject that. We have to say, no, this is not um, something that uh, we can accept. This is something that we can mitigate, we can reduce, we can stop the trend upwards and at least curtail it and, and send it down. Um, you know, a lot of these things, uh, when it comes down to it, um, are attempting to be addressed through various different programs that you see in the community, um, outstanding classes such as A Matter of Balance. Um, you know, Tai Chi, believe it or not, is actually a really, really outstanding intervention plan um, that is associated with decreasing fall risk. But the biggest thing is, again, it's not a one-size-fits-all, um, it's not a one-size-fits-all problem. What we need to do is again examine on a multitude of levels, you know, where the areas of, of risk are, so we avoid, you know, the, mm -hmm. the missed links and, and everything like that. Um, you know, for instance, even just the slight cognitive decline um, could be a higher risk of a fall. So, you know, when we look at that, you know, is that something that we would detect every day? No, you know, but is it something that we should pick up on and relate to fall risk and mitigate? You know, absolutely. Absolutely, and it sounds mm -hmm. like we talked a little bit about your company too. Mm -hmm. If there is someone at home that's family members, they're worried maybe their loved one has fallen and, and then it's not reporting it. <clears throat> excuse me, or they think they might be at risk. What what tips could you give them? What what should they do? You know, the the fall risk initiative. Um, to test and obviously prevent falls is something that has taken a high priority from uh, both CMS and the CDC. We've heard about the STEADY um, algorithm, which uh, the STEADY algorithm is a fancy uh, chart uh, that medical providers are, you know, asked to follow in regard to what's the best way to obviously, you know, mitigate a fall risk or anything like that. You know, has the person fallen before? Check. Go here or not? You know, go here. And so there's different things that we can do. Um, you know, in, in that regard. But um, if, if we're at home, um, and I had a concern again, um, the best way again is to obviously contact a physician or feel free to, you know, go to our website, uh, you know, www.safe-balance.com. We can partner you with one of our Safe Balance licensees uh, in the area who can then, you know, obviously provide you with this comprehensive assessment, um, you know, as part of their protocol and, and go from there, provide this information to your physician. And most importantly, if we find something that you're aware of or maybe not necessarily aware of, we can obviously, you know, address it, you know, preemptively rather than reactively. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and as you said earlier, you know, the goal is to age in place. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people get the idea that, oh, mom's fallen or dad's fallen. I have to, you mm -hmm. know, they need to go into assisted living. Sure. Being in assisted living, does that actually reduce reduce the risk of falling? Well, you know, assisted living, um, you know, for the most part, or, or the type of care that is um, provided, uh, you know, whether it be in the home or, or in a dedicated senior community, um, really has to do with the amount of assistance that a person needs. Um, do they need assistance um, getting themselves dressed? Do they need assistance ambulating from point A to point B um, with either supervision or an assistive device or different things like that? So there isn't like a blanket answer to that question but the one thing about um, 
you know, safe balance or even uh, the multifactorial falls risk assessment, you know, to intervention program, is it really kind of classifies, you know, the, the level of supervision or maybe assistance that would be required. But most importantly, you have somebody who maybe has deconditioned, um, you know, general weakness of the lower extremities, for instance. You know, maybe it's time to introduce a cane, you know, previously that they haven't, and we've just decreased their risk. That doesn't necessarily make the jump to assisted living or, or anything yeah. like that. There's yeah. so many steps that, you know, obviously can, you know, be put into play. But assisted living facilities, for instance, you know, we could be looking at, you know, some of the highest fall risks there. So again, a sudden change and obviously being able to detect that sudden change, provide the intervention is something where, you know, safe balance in and of itself can absolutely be critical um, to keeping them in their apartment in the assisted living facility or community rather than into the emergency room or in the hospital and obviously going from there. And you mentioned canes. If someone mm -hmm. is at home, uh, what are some top products that maybe people should consider installing or having on hand if they do have a, a loved one that's a fall risk? Well, not only is it uh, you know is, is there a, a plethora of these of these devices, but it's not a one size fits all you know kind of a thing. So I always recommend the inclusion of a physical therapist in particular to identify the specific need of what type of equipment um, could be provided. So um, a cane, for instance, or a quad cane, or a rolling walker. You know the ones with the tennis balls and the two wheels on yeah. them. Uh, or the four-wheel walker with the handbrakes and different things like that that come into play. Again, each of these devices is appropriate for a certain level of function. And it's important to obviously bring somebody with a certain level of skill set to introduce the appropriate um, device, you know, it comes into play. But if we have somebody, for instance, who is uh, having difficulty um, maintaining balance, uh, you know, as they bathe or anything like that, we all know that a tub shower or anything like that can be very, very slippery, you know. So perhaps a shower chair so that they can sit, you know, while they're bathing you know is something that we could introduce that could decrease the risk of falls or th certain things like that so mm -hmm. I always like to include you know a multitude of skill sets when it's appropriate um, when it comes to durable medical equipment assisted devices for ambulation and, and going from there so mm -hmm. very very important because the introduction of those devices has proven time and time again statistically overwhelmingly um, in the body of literature that's out there that um, you know, a, a simple introduction of of that type of technology is is substantial in decreasing the risk of a fall. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, yeah. Yeah. it's a very interesting topic, and you you've brought a a lot of new information that I never would have considered, especially the the vision part. Mm -hmm. Being a person who has horrible eyes, <laughs> thank thank God for contacts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, I, I just, once you said that, it made me think, I'm like, yeah, you know, I trip over things if I don't have my glasses on or, mm -hmm. you know, first thing in the morning, if I leave them on my nightstand rather than grabbing them, I kick the dog, right. you know, fall over piles of clothes, and it's yeah. just me being messy personally, right. but... Right. But it, it is a very interesting aspect of it. Well, and even just bringing attention to it. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody who's in the home, I mean, I'm notorious for this in my own home. I never change light bulbs. You know, but somebody yeah. who is, um, you know, somebody who gets up, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, obviously having low lit, you know, night lights, you know, in regard to the ambulation path, you know, is just a simple way that we can illuminate and, and highlight obstacles. Yeah. Uh, people who have hardwood floors versus carpet, throw rugs, different things like that. You know, there's certain ways that we can utilize this from an occupational therapy standpoint standpoint to make just simple 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 environmental modifications or recommendations that we can that we can obviously decrease the risk of falls and again it really has to do with the skill set of the appropriate type of uh, interventionist yeah. that comes into play well that's that's absolutely great thank you Nate. appreciate it we actually kind of run out of time wish we could mm -hmm. talk more of course if you at home have experienced a fall uh, recently or even t today or anytime and you're concerned about it first call your doctor but if they have any other questions maybe for fall prevention like you're talking mm -hmm. where can they reach you um, the best way to reach us is uh, to give us a call actually in our office we're local downtown Birmingham uh, area code two four eight seven nine two six three zero one we can partner you with one of our uh, licensees uh, in the area who can who can uh, obviously make sure that you know we can get you tested and, and, and where we need to be um, as well as you know our website uh, www www.safe-balance.com um, and again um, you know safe balance is uh, you know we're a Michigan company but you know we're, we're all over the country we're in you know Los Angeles uh, Phoenix Illinois Indiana Florida all over the place so again um, definitely a, a new solution to a seemingly old problem that isn't going away and we want to stand on the front line to ensure that this gets eradicated as best as possible well thank you it's, a, it's been a pleasure having you on today yep, so thank you it's good if you have a, at home have any questions about any of this or any other content you see on our show you can contact us at area code 248 
288-2270 or shoot us an email at boomerhealth at americaremedical.com. Thanks for watching.